Okay. Hello, my name is Yanis Emergidis. I am the director of the Center for Axion and uh, High Precision Physics. We do Axion Dark Matter Research. I'm also a professor here at KAIS, professor of physics. Choosing your supervisor is one of the most important decisions you are going to make in your life. So you need to be careful. And this is what the talk is all about. How to choose your supervisor, but also how to make other important choices. How to choose your supervisor, or else how a plan for success as a graduate student. This is one of the most important decisions in your life. It's um, almost as important as getting married. It's, uh, so you need to be really careful. Not quite as married, but it's a very important decision. So in these contents, I'm going to, to tell you a little bit about becoming a scientist, what it entails to become a scientist. Look for your field of uh, research. Research the lab before you visit the lab and then visit the lab and talk to people, actually spend time on that. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time to what to look for in a supervisor, a good supervisor, a person that you will develop a close relationship. And of course, plan for success. We all want to succeed, but success doesn't come by accident. You have to plan for it. And at the end, I'll give you a summary. So becoming a scientist, this is an amazing journey you're going to take. But what is this? Is science, first of all? It is, uh, this uh, I googled, and it, it comes as the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. In plain language, what it is, is a process of seeking the truth in a systematic way. It's not the truth per se, but it is the process of seeking the truth. You have to differentiate between those because the truth can change from time to time as we learn more about the, our uh, world. And the definition of a scientist that's what we want to become. So that's a person who is studying or has expert knowledge of one or more of the natural or physical sciences. In plain language, again, a scientist is a person who is seeking the truth in a systematic approach. It's a very exciting field. It's a career you want to, you chose to, to follow. And uh, you can do it right. And how do you know you do it right? Let's see some of the successes from the past. This is a famous picture from the Solvay Conference 1927. It's amazing how many people I think, I think it's 29 genius we call, we call them, people. And the question is, how did they succeed? Were these people the most uh, smart people in the world? Or uh, what did they do right to, to get where they, they got? And uh, I'll tell you some of the, of the things, but half of them were awarded the Nobel Prize. Half of them. As a matter of fact, Madame Curie was awarded two Nobel Prizes, and she's the only one who awarded the Nobel Prizes in different disciplines, one in uh, uh, physics and one in chemistry. But what was it about these people that made them successful? All right? And um, here, here it is. It's their choices. They made the right choices. The subject of study, it was mature to come out and for us to understand it so we can make uh, the, the breakthrough. It wasn't impossible at the time. And it was just right, mature, ready to, to, to be understood. They chose the correct supervisor, colleagues, and uh, how to spend their time. And you have to do the same thing. 
Once you make the correct choices, you can claim a, a place besides them. But uh, becoming a scientist, it, uh, it also involves a lot of up and, up and downs. Okay, are you ready for the ride? And be prepared for long hours, many failures. Most of the time we fail. Look, this is, nobody will tell you this. And when you read a textbook, it uh, sounds like from here, we go there in a straight line. And it never works like that. It's really, we are trying to feel our way to arrive to, to some higher truth, higher understanding. And ask yourself, why do you want to become a scientist? Do you like uh, problem solving? Curiosity about our world is the best one can do in life. Personally, I, I like problem solving. I love problem solving. I mean, this is what uh, attracted me to science. And, as, and later on, as I learned more about the world, I found out our world is really exciting. And so I became more curious about our world and I'm attacking some of the uh, most important questions in, in science today, all right? And I do believe that's the best one can do in life. So I was drawn into it because I loved the problem solving, and later on I learned to have curiosity about our world, and I do believe now that this is the best thing one can do in life. But make sure you understand that uh, indeed there is going to be a lots of ups and downs. As a matter of fact, most of the time you will fail. We all failed most of the time. But don't give up. Understand why you failed and why things didn't work out. And then you'll make things to work again. And, and that's not a failure. That's why nobody tells you this is not failure, because this is a process we learn, okay? But if you can't take bad news, don't get into this, because it's going to happen very often. Field of research, what to do? What is the right field of research? And you don't, probably don't have too many choices, so uh, you belong in a department, and look up every professor in your, in your department. And spend time, spend time to understand. You'll be surprised. Sometimes it's actually interesting. It's something you never heard of before that your professor down the, uh, the office is uh, doing with other uh, students or other professors. And uh, this is something that Weinberg said, as a matter of fact, Nobel Prize in Physics, one of the smartest people, uh, he just passed uh, recently. Uh, he said, look for a field with interesting problems rather than a settled one. Look for turbulent rather than calm waters. And, and that's an interesting uh, suggestion because when it's turbulent, when it's not settled, there is no guarantee you're going to succeed. So far, you being in school, where you knew every problem has a solution. And now, for the first time in your life, you're going to be faced with the problems. You don't know that there is a solution. As a matter of fact, nobody is supposed to know that there is a, a, a solution. And that's quite unsettling, and that scares people. Because it's, it's like looking at the abyss, and what if I fall down and I don't make it, and so on and so forth. And you have to be able to take that, that uh, uh, unsettling feeling. The other thing that Weinberg said is the following. He actually did the wrong thing. He didn't immerse into, the, uh, into research before he really understood more and more about the field theories he, he worked on. He said, don't worry about your knowledge in a particular field as long as you have the basics. And, and that's an important thing. As a matter of fact, some of the students, some of us, understand things, really understand things by doing, 
And once you do them, you really understand them. Okay? You take a lot of courses. You solve problems. And you do all of those things. But the important thing is that you, it really sinks in when you do it. So have it. Understand where to find the solutions. Take the courses you need to take, study hard and so on. But really keep in mind, you really understand. Uh, understand things once uh, you work on those things. So you, you understand things at the fundamental levels w when you do those things. So don't wait for, uh, to understand everything uh, before you immerse into that. As a matter of fact, it's one of the best ways to learn, to do them. Yeah? So, uh, the subject. You want really to change the world. All right? To rewrite the constitution rather than write a small law of a small town. You want to make a big impact. Look for something big like dark matter, dark energy, CP violation, and matter-antimatter asymmetry mystery of our universe. Those examples I took from particle physics. But you can look up the equivalent ones for other fields. Okay, change the world. Understand, these are beautiful um, subjects. Don't just make a measurement nobody cares about because you want to get a PhD. It's not worth your time. Okay, spend it well. Re research the lab before you visit. So uh, you can choose which labs to visit, all right, but to research them. And then look up their accomplishments. What have they done? Publications, breakthroughs. Is the lab su successful? Are they famous? Do they have international collaborators, visitors? Is, there f is this field still an interesting topic for research? Or is it yesterday's news? Look up the students. Are they doing well? Are they happy when you walk in there? Uh, how do they talk? Do they talk with enthusiasm? But you do your research before you visit, so you know a little bit about what they do. As a matter of fact, from experience I have, the best students are the ones who come in prepared. And I know they love the subject, that's why they come in there. They don't just look for a job. Talk to people. That's amazing. Once you talk to people, you know where you are. Okay? Observe everything about it. About the, the lab, how they handle the, the appointment, the way they talk to you and behave. Talk to the students. Ask them to show you their workspace, how they, uh, what they work on, who helps them when they need help. What happens if they need help? Support. Look at the lab, the instruments, the facility. Is this a totally new place that will take time to build up or a very old place on its way out? It's okay to be a new place. That's okay. Because you'll have a chance to make a big impact. But please understand that it will take longer for you to, to get your thesis because Things don't work at the beginning. You remember what I told you? Most of the time we fail. Most of the time things don't work. There is no manual to, to tell you other than the instruments. The instruments you'll learn in a week how to operate them. But there is no manual for your experiment. So be prepared for that. Um, but this is a very critical one. Many, many times there is a tendency to want to have graduate students because they are cheaper. As a matter of fact, in the U.S. where I come from, uh, this was overused. And it, it, this is part of the abuse I'll be talking about. All right? You don't want to be slave labor. Okay? But look in whether the lab is really looking for intelligent people people to solve problems. This is where you want to go because you want to grow in there, to become something really uh, better than one when you got in. How do they treat students? How they treat uh, uh, women and minorities? How about foreign students? 
Is, are there any foreign students in the lab you're going to? Or is it just a, a, a uniform uh, student background? At this stage of your life, you're a student and you need to learn at several levels. And I mean that, including social skills with non-familiar cultures in the future. Let's face it, if we don't learn to compete internationally, we'll fail. And we have to be um, prepared for it. The, the future's leaders will have to deal effectively at the international level. Be prepared now. <coughs> Let's see what the supervisor uh, should have. So when you meet with a supervisor, see how you feel. Your first feeling is also probably Im uh, very important. Is this the person you like to work with, to be identified with? Pay attention to the language he or she uses describing their work. Are they too much self-centered? Are they talking about how smart they are? This is critical. Do they promise you too little or too much? Look for someone who loves his or her work and is interested in important scientific problems you care about. Find out about, uh, about them. Too young, too old? Is this person world famous or working on potential paradigm changing subjects? Is this person too busy to talk with you on a regular basis? When she talks with you, is he or she interested in your opinion? This is particularly important. If you come in and you hear a person talking and not interested in, in you, just walk away. This is not your place to be. What you want is a partner. You don't need a boss. This is not, it should not become that uh, slave-boss uh, uh, relationship. You need a partner so you can develop and become a scientist. Is this person going to help you develop as an individual uh, scientist, as a person, as a citizen? You have to look at all those things. You have to have all, you make all the correct choices to make it, remember that. And, and this is something that I found from experience, that any mentor supervisor should be at least 15 years older than you, otherwise, they may compete with you. This risk is actually too high. You'll find that uh, if a, your supervisor is competing with you, you have a problem. So don't get in there. Okay. Choose, uh, choose uh, a, a mid-career uh, person. And be aware of the fact that the supervisor is a human, uh, human being. We all come from with strengths and weaknesses and Working with a supervisor is a very close relationship with clear power imbalance. Make sure it does not, cannot become abusive. Find out about him or her. Find out about the person if there is anything out there. Um, it, this is particularly important. Ask about other students' experiences. How is it there? Are they happy going to, to work every day? Are they abused in terms of chastised for nothing or anything? And uh, um, so the important thing about it is really yourself. If you don't feel good when you are around that person, if he or she makes you feel bad about yourself, you, when, where you come from, for anything, run away. Forget about it. One of the basic requirements for your success is to feel good about yourself and feel excited going to work. If you don't feel excited going to work, don't compromise, don't go. Find another place. There are good places. Okay. And it's okay to change labs. Plan for success. So, you're a student and you need to become a scientist. You learn to find all the answers in the book. Now you have to create the answers in the book. And that's, that will require a lot of work, a face transformation. 
And the work ethics that this requires are immense. They're really tough. You have to have discipline to be able to work or focus on your work. Your integrity needs to be impeccable. Absolutely. Don't forget. Never forget your values. By the way, it's much easier if you do always the right thing. You don't have to worry about uh, small things and garbage in life. You, have to, you can focus on the real, uh, real problems uh, in physics or in your science. Develop independent thinking. Learn to think. Come up with new ideas. Actually, uh, this, is, this could be another uh, seminar on how to learn to come up with new ideas. It's a skill you are not born with. Don't be afraid to fail. The more you're not afraid to fail, the more easily, the easier it is to come up with new ideas. But that requires a lot of work. And most of the time, remember, those things don't work. Okay? And take reasonable uh, risks. You, you have to balance that because you don't want to overdo it. And you're not a slave or cheap labor and don't behave like one. What do I mean by that? Don't wait for your supervisor to show up in the morning and tell you, oh, you'll do this and this and this. No, that's not. I don't treat my students like that. I tell them, if you wait for me to tell you what you're going to do in the morning or for the day, you're going to fail because you, are not, you don't know your job. I'm going to give you a direction. And then you have to find your way. At the beginning, it's going to be slower. All right? And then I, well, we can help. We can work together. But slowly, you have to know every day what you're doing on your own. Take initiatives. Solve problems. <coughs> Communicate. Even tough subjects. Sometimes you may have a problem. Maybe you may have depression issues. That's okay. It's okay. Failure can hit you hard and so on and you feel bad. That's okay. Come up uh, to the office of your supervisor and talk. Communication is a two-way street. Do your part. Don't just blame the others. Everybody, it's always somebody else's fault and so on. No. You have to take charge of your life, of your scientific uh, life. The other thing that works for students is to give presentations to other students, to your fellow students in regional meetings, lots of them. Get used to giving lots of talks. The more talks you give, the easier it becomes. And then once you give talks, it, you, you have the sense of accomplishment and success fits on, on itself. Don't accept your supervisor stealing your work. Okay, these are, these are, and there are subtle ways for your supervisor to steal your work. Don't, don't accept that. The correct way to communicate new ideas is to do that in writing or with talk, locally public, or it's best to present your ideas after you spend some time on them and not right away. If you present them too fresh, it doesn't work. Um, him or she may find a mistake and so on. And most, uh, most likely, uh, he or she will find that you'll feel bad and it will have a bad effect. Don't do it. Just work a little bit on it and then write it up and then give a talk. It's the best way to do it. So everybody knows what uh, you contributed. If you are abused by anyone, say something. Talk to your student rep or your department admins. If you feel bad about yourself when you come to work, it's not normal. It will not work. Talk to people. Ask them, do you feel bad coming to work? How is it? To your mentor, supervisor, and so on. Fix that problem. Okay? And research is absolutely a great job opportunity. Do it right. Do it 100% of your time. And let's talk about time because this is a precious currency. It's your goal. You have goal, and that is your time, what you have in your hands. Don't spend it aimlessly. Time is the only thing you have over, over us, our <laughs> us supervisors and uh, professors. Time is your chance. So, time management, I, I adopted this from the Google paradigm. 
work dil diligently, hard, respect others, help others without telling, boasting, and so on. Because you may need them at some point, and they'll help you too. And the group is much better, much, much better than the sum of the individuals. And achieve much more, 120% of what you need to do in 70% of your time. You have time, if you work um, a week, five days or seven days or six days or whatever, you know what 70% is. Study papers, work related uh, material for 20% of your time. For five days, that is one full day. This is a full day. You have to spend it on reading papers. If you only do work and you become an expert, an expert, it, the danger is you'll become an engineer. There's nothing wrong becoming an engineer, but he's not a scientist that is actively looking and understanding the subject. And that's fundamental. Okay? And spend 10% of your time on broader, seemingly unrelated issues. See how they solve problems. How do they solve them? You may be able to, to have a new, to implement their ideas onto your system. Okay, I'll tell you a secret. Every time I went to a conference, I came back with a new idea. Okay, this is part of it. This is part of my 10%. And I do it even to this day. Let me summarize over here. So, love what you do or don't do it at all. I mean, this is hard. To do science is hard. It's a great job with lots of excitement, potential. Learn to think and learn to come up with ideas. You can do it. This is a skill. You can do it. Supervisors, mentors, and even you are all human beings. Not perfect. Don't identify with the personality of your supervisor. Don't make that mistake doesn't work. Keep your individuality. Actually, become much better than your supervisor at all levels. Otherwise, you're not doing your job. Choose a, a supervisor that will help you grow and develop to a great scientist. Be respectful to all and expect everyone, including your supervisor, to respect you too. Good luck with everything. Have fun. <laughs>